So this is a, a brief review of week one um, and then an introduction to week two. So last week uh, we saw signals and systems in general and then we focused on the delta function, uh, both in 1D and 2D. This week uh, the whole subject matter is really about linearity, shift invariance, which is encapsulated in the one process that's really called convolution. So that's what I'll quickly introduce in this uh, video. So we know from last week that um, a digital signal, um, say Xn, uh, can be represented as a summation of shifted delta functions, each with a unique coefficient, where for this representation, the coefficient um, is just given by the signal evaluated at that point. So that's the expression here on the right hand side, a digital signal is equal to a summation of delta functions, each shifted to a particular position uh, k and then weighted by the function evaluated at that position. So a very straightforward concept that we've looked at at length already, so we'll press on. Um, now with various uh, systems that we're considering, such as imaging systems, um, electronic circuits, whatever the system might be, Many of them turn out to be what's known as linear time invariant for temporal signals or linear shift invariant for spatial signals. And um, that means that a very simple process is going on. So on the left hand side here, I'm showing you what we've already seen, representing a digital signal, a discrete function as a summation of shifted delta functions. And we pass it through a linear time invariant system. So to imagine a kind of system here, for simplicity I've chosen um, a circuit that would be a perfect amplifier which would just pass each of these impulses through with only a modification of amplitude. So for example if it's an amplifier we might want to amplify it by a factor of A for example. So forgive the um, brevity of the description here, I've just copied across the same function here but all I need you to imagine is that these delta functions would now be correspondingly higher or indeed um, lower, let's just say longer, whether in the positive upward direction or in the negative downward direction, increased in their amplitude by some factor A. And uh, that would be an example of a perfect amplifier as a linear time invariant system. And you'll see that I've shown the description of the output here, which should be very obvious. If you look at the input signal described as a summation of deltas, then the output function is also a summation of deltas. But look, the delta has just been scaled by that ampli amplification factor A. So you'll notice we have replaced the delta by A times delta in the output. Okay, so again, these should be correspondingly scaled up. I'll leave that to your imagination, just for the brevity of preparing this slide. Um, if this was an imaging system in 1D, then we'd consider this as some kind of um, function varying with position, discrete uh, position N in this case. And if we had a perfect imaging system, then we'd want the kind of identity mapping. So imagine this is some kind of input to some imaging device, and we want to capture that information perfectly. Then we would hope to get out the other side the same function as what is coming into the system. So in that case, we'd kind of hope for uh, the value A to be equal to 1, such that this output signal is identical to the input signal. And, and that would be an example of a linear shift invariant system. So notice how simple this mapping is for a linear time invariant or a linear shift invariant system. In this case, where I've just got a delta function going to another delta function with possibly just a simple scaling, okay? And the key point here, here is that convolution, which we'll be looking at in detail during this week, models the output of a linear time invariant or a linear shift invariant system. So the slide I'm showing you here is about as simple as it gets for an LTI or an LSI system where the delta function in the input just gets mapped to another delta function in the output for the case of a perfect imaging system or for the case of a perfect amplifier, for example, with a temporal signal uh, where we might just have some kind of trivial scaling of the delta function. But as we're about to see, of course, life is not that straightforward and our systems are never that perfect and that's where it's ever so slightly less trivial to describe the output signal. So let's press on. So this is an example of um, uh, uh, the impulse response function if that system had been, for example, an audio uh, digital signal processing device. So an impulse in the input to such a system 
would give these kinds of different impulse response functions according to what that system is doing. So if we passed it through our system, um, and it's no longer just doing a simple scaling due to amplification, but if, for example, we had an audio DSP that would do high frequency boosting, for example, then this would be the impulse response function. And what that means is each impulse in the input just gets replaced by that uh, impulse uh, response function. Very simple substitution process. If we were doing low frequency boosting, emphasizing lower frequency sounds, for example, then the impulse would be replaced by that impulse response function. So you've got impulse going in to a DSP system and you've got impulse response coming out the other side. So that means uh, modeling of these systems is extremely simple. There's the input signal, just a linear summation of shifted delta functions. It goes through this system, which I've just show, taken, for example, the high frequency boosting case. And you'll notice this system is characterized by its impulse response because what happens to each of these impulse inputs, they just get replaced by correspondingly scaled impulse response functions. And that is all that it does. Nothing more, nothing less. So the equations I'm showing here should be very obvious. Look what's happened. The delta function describing um, the input, so we've got a weighted summation of deltas. In the output, we just have a, the same weighting factors, but just for the impulse response function h. And this expression on that bottom right, bottom right hand corner is what is known as convolution, and that is simplistically replacing delta functions from an input function by response functions in the output of a linear time invariant or linear shift invariant system. It is that simple. So for an imaging system, uh, we'd often have what's known as a point spread function. That's like the impulse response function, but in 2D. It's the response to a, a point of light, if you like, for an imaging system. So there's my point of light. Imagine it as a star in the night sky. And here is uh, the case of what a system would output if we have a, quite a blurred imaging device, like a, a bad quality camera. That point input just gets replaced by a Gaussian point spread function, just by way of example. Or as you'll see this week in the lectures and the recorded lectures, we could look at a 2D PET scanner and that point input gets replaced by a point spread function that arises from back projecting data. So again, it's just a substituting process. Here now is a collection of input um, points through an imaging system. Here I'm showing just a 1D profile through that, to look at it as a 1D imaging system. The system is characterized again by just this point spread function. And there is a, an image of a point spread function for the case of the back projected PET data. Look at the output. The output within noise, forgive the noise here, just takes each point input and replaces it by a point spread function. Of course, if these are increased in amplitude, then the outputs are correspondingly increased in amplitude because it's a linear system, which again, you'll cover in this week's lectures. So therefore, again, the input signal, if we just looked at a 1D profile through here to keep it simple, I'll show you the 2D equations in a moment. The input is just, again, a weighted collection of shifted delta functions along a 1D profile, for example, and the point spread function would just be in 1D. Imagine it as just a line profile through this PSF. And then the output, of our linear shift invariant system is virtually identical to that input. What's the key change? The delta function, the, the points have been replaced by point spread functions. Nothing more, nothing less. So in 2D, we now look at the entire 2D array here and look at the entire 2D array of the points in the input here. So that means we've now got a function, discrete 2D function f of x, y. And again, this should be a very familiar expression to you from last week, it's just saying, this is a collection of delta functions shifted to different positions with varying amplitudes. Here it's just a simple uh, constant amplitude for these point sources. We run it through our linear shift invariant system. What comes out the other side? Virtually the same expression. All that's happened is a delta function, okay, a point, has been replaced by a point spread function. So we've got delta getting replaced by h. And these expressions on the right hand side are known as convolution. This is 1D convolution, and then this is a 2D convolution for the discrete case. And the continuous versions of these formulae, formulae are also very simple. So that's all I wanted to say in this introductory video. 
Week two ahead then is all about convolution and linearity. Hope you enjoy the lectures. Thank you.